Hi there, and thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be looking at Lesson 10.6, the Samples and Population section. Today we're going to be writing down 10 things in our notes. Let's go ahead and get started. First thing we want to write down is just make sure we understand these vocabulary terms. Um, we want to make sure we understand the difference between population, which is everything, and then in a group or a people, a set of people. Sample would be a part of the population. Unbiased, that just represents population well, and the people are selected at random. And then bias sample doesn't represent the population well, and some people are favored over others. Let's go ahead and take time now to pause the video so you can write these four things down. And once you're done, click play so we can try some questions. So the next thing you're going to try in your notes for number five is you're going to identify which one is the population and which one is the sample. So let's go ahead and pause the video now, try question number five, and once you're done, click play. So for this one, the population are the students in the school because that's including everyone in the school, whereas the students in a math class, that's going to be the sample. It's not everyone, um, it's just a portion of the population. The next thing we want to do is just to make sure that the results will be um, representing a random sample. It says you want to know the favorite extracurricular activities of students after school. Determine whether each method will result in a random sample and explain your reasoning. Let's go ahead and read the two examples here, letter A and B. Pause the video so you can try it, and once you're done, click play to check your work. For letter A, this would not be random because you're asking the members of a band, and they are more likely to be participating in the band. Usually if you want to find um, the differences or different extracurricular activities, you won't just ask one sample of students. Um, for letter B, if you publish a survey in the school newspaper, that would be random because everyone would get to see that survey. You do have to make sure that you understand, though, that sometimes people won't read the school newspaper, so maybe just actually going up to random people face-to-face -face and asking them um, would be a, actually a better way to do that. For number seven, it says you want to know what should be served at our school lunches. How should you ask the question to ensure the answers you receive are unbiased? Let's go ahead and take time now to pause the video and maybe write down your response. And once you're done, click play. So for this one, you want to make sure that you create a random sample. Um, and how you do that is you, you don't limit your, um, your questions or your surveys to one set of students. Okay. So maybe you want to ask every other student um, or five homerooms in different grade levels. Um, what th one, one thing you want to make sure that you don't do is just ask people that bring their own lunch because if they bring their own lunch, they do not care about school lunches. So you do want to make sure that the, the students you would be asking actually eat the school lunch, okay? Here's number eight. Let's go ahead and read the question, and let's go make sure we pause it too so we have some time to try it, and once you're done, click play. Okay, it says you want to estimate the number of students in a high school who ride the school bus, which sample is unbiased. Um, that one would be letter D. The reason is is because you're sampling random people during lunch. During lunch means there's probably different grade levels in there. At high school, it's a little bit different than middle school. Middle school, I know you eat all with seventh grade or all with eighth grade. Um, but four students in the hallway would not be enough. Students in the marching band, they have the same schedule after school. So they probably don't ride the bus or they catch a ride home with someone else. And then 50 seniors wouldn't be a good idea either because they're most likely able to drive at this point, so they're probably not going to ride the school bus. So 100 students at random during lunch, you would get a chance to, to sample all 9th through 12th graders, and that way you can get an adequate sample that's unbiased. Here's number 9. It says you want to estimate the number of 8th grade students in your school who consider it relaxing to listen to music. You randomly survey 15 members of the band. Your friend surveys every 5th student who appears on an alphabetical list of 8th graders. Which sample is unbiased and explain? Let's go ahead and take time now to pause the video real quick so you can try the question. Once you're done, click play. So the one that's unbiased would be your friend survey. The reason why your friend survey is unbiased is because they've, they've surveyed a random sample of students. 
more than likely the students that you surveyed um, you survey the people in the band, they probably do find it relaxing to listen to music because they are in band, they like music. So that really doesn't give us an adequate representation of the population there. So your friend survey would be better. The last portion is we're going to talk about is using predictions again and writing proportions with them. It says you ask 75 randomly chosen students how many movies they watch each week. And so these are your outcomes right here in this circle graph. There are 1,200 students in the school. Predict the number N of students in the school who would watch one movie each week. Well, I know that one movie, that'd be 21 people out of 75. So we're trying to figure out how many people out of 1,200 would like to watch movies. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to cross multiply 21 times 1,200 and 75 times X. 21 times 1,200 is going to give us 25,200. And all we got to do now is just divide both sides by 75. So we're going to divide that number by 75, and we're going to get 336 students who watch movie, one movie a week. Okay? So what you're going to try is this one. You do want to set up a proportion. It's using the same um, numbers. And once you're done, Go ahead and click play to check your work. Okay, so you're asking 75 movies, 75 students, how many movies they watch each week. There are 12 students, students in the school. Predict the number of students who would watch two or more movies each week. So two or more movies is 24 people out of 75. And we want to know how many out of 1,200. So we're going to be multiplying 24 times 1,200. Okay, that's going to give us 28,800. And then to solve it, I need to divide that big number by 75. And that's going to give me 384 students who watch two or more movies each week. Okay? That's going to conclude our video for today. Thanks so much for tuning in. Just make sure you have those 10 things written down, and we'll catch you next time.